I have lots of friends who are thinking about working on startups and trying to work on startups, but one of their big problems is finding the idea to work on. And some of them even start working on something and then stop thinking it's good, pivot away. And overall, most of the time, they're just spending thinking of the next idea. How should they think about that? So the first piece of advice I give people is that they should never start thinking about a startup by thinking about a startup idea. Um, and the reason why is because like, I think that exercises all the wrong muscles. Like when you start thinking about an idea, you think like, is it creative? Is it unique? Does it sound snappy? Like it's all the, all these like fake things. What I encourage founders to do is start by thinking about a problem. Is there a problem out there that a user has that is interesting to solve? And, you know, this kind of creates an immediate fork on the road um, that I see with a lot of young founders. Um, do you want to work on a problem that you have personal experience with? Or do you want to work on a problem where you don't? Um, more often than not, people want to work on a problem where they have no personal experience. And the reason why is very simple. Because it's easy to convince yourself you know something about a problem that you know nothing about. <laughs> and when you know a lot about a problem, on the flip side, it's easy to tell yourself, I have no idea how I would solve that. Like, that seems really hard. <laughs> and so I see people go down this trap all the time of, I'm going to work on something that's someone else's problem, not my own. I'm going to come up with, like, fake insights in my head based on very little experience. I'm going to build something. I hand it to those users. They... <laughs> shit on it in like a myriad of ways. Like you didn't even really understand the problem I had. You didn't solve the problem that you're solving nor the problem I really have. And then the founder gets depressed and then they realize that problem is harder than they thought and then they pivot, right? Common, 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 common. So um, what I like to tell people is that if you can start with something you know something about. <laughs> um, it's easier and you can be your first user and you can trust your instincts on the MVP that you're gonna build, the first version of the product you're gonna build because you can use it and say, do I like using it? Mm -hmm. That is the easy way. And um, oftentimes I'll see a founder and they'll say, well, I don't have any problems. And I think what they mean by that is, I'm not worried about where I'm gonna eat. I have a roof over my head. I have parents who love me. I have a good education. So I don't have any problems. And, you know, sure, yes, you don't have any big problems, probably. <laughs> um, but when I dig deeper, I ask them, like, well, talk to me about growing up. Were there anything you struggled with there? Talk to me about high school. Talk to me about college. Talk to me about what's going on in your community. Talk to me what's going on in your friend group. Um, Suddenly, you know, when you kind of get them to talk about their lives, um, problems start appearing. And, you know, I was talking to one founder um, who said, um, you know, now that I think about it, you know, one of the problems that I had growing up was that my parents didn't like each other very much and they didn't want to go to counseling. And they kind of thought staying together was making the house better for us. But in reality, we kind of knew what was up and, 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 and so being at home was not great. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know, I bet there are a lot of people who are very similar to that. And, you know, this founder came back to me and he said, um, but yeah, how can we solve that? What are we going to sell it to the kid? What are we going to sell it to the parent? Like, how are we going to do it? Right. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting. Cause like in my mind, I was like, that's the fun part. <laughs> like the fun part's figuring out, like, how do you sell marriage therapy to a high school kid <laughs> for, for their parents, right? Like, I have no idea how you sell that. It might be a horrible, it, it might not work out, but it's a problem. You know that at the base level, if you figure it out, there'll be a lot of people who need it and you can make a lot of people's lives better. Um, and so I rather kind of take that execution risk on a problem that you know exists than to kind of take the other side of the equation. So the other side of the equation is let's work on something we don't know. Um, in that situation, um, you don't really know if the problem exists because you don't really understand the problem. In that situation, you often have to find yourself doing a lot more research up front. And in that situation as well, you often find yourself under this question of, should a product exist at all? 
So, you know, we call that product risk. So am I taking execution risk? I know this problem exists, but building a solution is going to be hard. Or am I taking product risk? Does anyone even want this? Does anyone even have this problem? You know, I think it's a problem, but I don't really know much about it. So does anyone really have it? And with that one, you know, what I really try to tell founders is like, please go into that with an open mind. Because if you're doing research, but you're bringing your own quasi-academic inexperience to the table, you're going to like think you see patterns that don't exist. You're going to have like fake insights. It's just like, like the less information you have, the more you're, your brain's going to fill it in with like what you think's going on that's backed up by absolutely nothing. Um, the other thing that I see is that, you know, when founders are going after problems where they don't understand the problem well, but they're opinionated about how the product should work, <laughs> that always blows my mind. I'm like, you're not even a user. Like you've never been a user. You don't have this problem. Why do you care whether you start by using the product and then it's a login or there's a login first and then you and then use the product? Like, why do you care whether it's like has to be like on-prem versus hosted or versus like people pay with a credit card versus enterprise sold? Like you're solving someone else's problem. Like you should be willing to be as flexible as possible if it's going to solve their problem. <laughs> and And you shouldn't get all caught up in this like, oh, well, I want to solve a problem that I don't understand and I want to solve it in the way that I like to solve it. And it's just like, okay, well, you know, this game is really, really hard. And like, if you have to find everything within your little bubble of what you like, like maybe you're not going to succeed. Um, and so anyways, you know, th this is the kind of thing I, I often tell people, start with, are you solving a problem that you understand well, or are you solving a problem you don't? If you're solving a problem you understand well, build the first version for yourself. If you start a problem that you don't, don't bring a lot of your opinions into the matter do some research, and build a first version that some of your users are going to really like, even if you don't like it. <laughs>